Good morning. Let's have our choir come this morning. Tri-State Baptist Temple this morning. Take a hymn book. Turn to hymn number 56. Hymn 56. Let's stand together and we'll sing when we all get to heaven. In order to be excited about going to heaven, you first have to know Christ as your Savior. You have to have eternal life so you can go. And I hope that's true in your life today. If not today, it could be today that you uh, meet Jesus Christ, accept Him as your Savior, and you can have eternal life and hope of heaven one day. So we're thankful for a great day, and we're glad that you are here. Uh, we just want to ask the Lord to bless our time together uh, before we go forward. So uh, we'll uh, pray together. Brother Watts, will you pray for us, please? Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated this morning and we will listen to our choir.
you mean our choir is going to come down this morning. We invite everyone to stand again and let's uh, just have a time greeting one another. Amen. Well, you can find your seat again this morning. We'll say welcome to you one more time. We are so glad that you're here and excited to be back in church this morning. I know that uh, I had a good time in the building with the Bible Hour, uh, just uh, uh, looking at God's Word today. And we're excited to hear Pastor preach in just a little while. And uh, we have uh, Super Church as well. We're going to take them over and, and uh, just share the Bible. And so we're excited today to be together uh, to fellowship and uh, it's good to fellowship like we just did. We call that fellowshipping a lot where we're greeting and speaking to one another and all those kind of things. But the thing that, that brings us together to fellowship is the Word of God and, and uh, the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're excited to hear the Bible today, and we're so glad that you are here. Uh, we do want to make a few announcements and remind you about some of the things that are going on in the life of our church. Tonight, our service uh, is... Uh, going to be around our open house for our daycare and our preschool ministry. And we are excited about uh, that. And uh, many of our families from our preschool and, and the daycare are going to be here tonight so they can be a part of our open house. And they'll be able to go in the, in the building and, and see uh, the classrooms and, and be able to uh, see uh, what they've got going on. I, I know they have different things to give them and all those kind of things. And in the ministry center, they've got 
uh, some of their artwork that they've been working on recently and just lots of uh, things that are going on tonight. And so we're excited about our open house for our preschool and our daycare ministry. It's a great ministry of our church, and we're excited about uh, just uh, what the Lord is doing with it. And now with that being said, this it serves is still for our church family. And, of course, we're inviting all those families to be here, but this is for all of us to be here and be a part of and, and uh, just to, uh, to, to see what we're doing uh, with our preschool and daycare ministry, to be excited and, and just uh, uh, praise the Lord for what he's done already. And then, of course, we're praying for a great year uh, in our preschool as well uh, during this school year and just the opportunity to, to teach uh, these young boys and girls uh, uh, these uh, truths that they need to learn uh, for school, but also spiritual uh, 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 lessons that we're going to be taught. Uh, they'll be learning things from God's Word as well. And so uh, we're excited about uh, tonight, and we want to encourage you to be here and be a part uh, of our open house for our daycare and preschool tonight. Some other things we want to let you know about is our the fall semester of our uh, South Point College of the Bible is starting on September the 12th. And uh, we're looking forward to that. If you are interested in uh, taking those classes, beginning those classes this fall, uh, Pastor would like you to sign up and uh, let him know about that as he's prepared and getting ready for this next semester. And so we'll send a sign-up sheet around in here. And if you would like to be a part of that, uh, uh, like some, uh, uh, to know about that, we, we want you to sign up and uh, let Pastor know, and he can get you uh, the book list and those kind of things that you need. And so we're looking forward to that. The classes for this semester are in the bulletin, so you can look at that and see what's being offered uh, this time. So don't forget about that. And uh, there's some uh, uh, notes about the next joy trip and the next Ladies Bible Fellowship coming up this month. Don't miss out on those kind of things. We want to encourage you to continue to pray for our King's Turf flag football and cheerleading program and uh, we had our second uh, week of practice this week and uh, we're looking forward to finishing out this month practicing and then we'll start our games it's and we've already met many new families and we're excited just to share the bible with them share our church with them and and uh, have a good time with their families as we uh, play this game and, uh, and our cheerleaders are cheerleading uh, for these games and so we're excited about these things we've had uh, some good helpers this week uh, th this week and last week and we appreciate uh, those who are giving their time to come yesterday was really hot as well and so we had people out helping us and and uh getting in that heat and it was a, a blessing and we can still use some more help and and uh so if you would be willing to come and be a part of our king's uh, turf flag football program we could use you you don't have to know how to coach flag football or know anything that's going on in the game to be a help uh, I need people, especially in the four-year-old and kindergarten division, just to help um, uh, corral and just help uh, keep those boys and girls where we are supposed to be so they can learn and, and play. And it's a lot of fun, and you know uh, how those groups go. Uh, they learn and they, they do well, but they still need a lot of help uh, to keep their attention. And so, uh, especially on a day like today, it, yesterday it was so hot. Uh, the helpers were really a uh, great help, but we could use more in those areas as well. So uh, we could use your help. If you could help, let me know or let Pastor know, and uh, we would uh, appreciate that as well. And then we want to remind you uh, our next missions trip we're going to have. Uh, will be next summer. We're excited about that. The information meeting about that is going to be on Sunday, August the 25th. And so if you are interested in going on the next missions trip, we want to encourage you to make plans to be here uh, for that meeting. I believe we're going to have that meeting before the evening service. And so uh, a few minutes before the evening service, we'll meet and uh, a pastor will give us uh, uh, the initial information about that, that trip, where we're going to go. Uh, initial costs, all those kind of things, what a mission trip is all about if you've never been on one before. And so we want to encourage you, if you're interested, uh, you, th that doesn't mean you're committing, but if you're interested, you can come and be a part of the meeting and uh, begin to pray and ask the Lord about uh, the next missions trip. So we want to encourage you to, to mark that down. And then lastly this morning, I, I just want to make uh, mention or note of there's several signs that are around our auditorium uh, today, and it, it's showing the needs we have for our carpeting Pro, uh, carpet uh, needs in our in this building, and we're excited, and we're working towards replacing all the carpet in this in this building. We we took care of that wing uh, recently, and it looks so nice, and looks 
uh, uh, so much better in there. And, uh, of course, this carpet has been here so long, we're excited to replace it. And uh, just continue to moving forward. And uh, I, I, Pastor can tell, you, tell us exactly how much we have right now. But we're getting close to being able to do this middle section, which you'll see the sign over there is $3,250. We're getting close to being able to do that. And so we're excited about these things. So we want those signs to be there for us to be reminded to pray for this project. And uh, we want to take care of the facilities that God has given us to minister in and to share uh, the gospel through. And so we want to we take care of it and replace some of these things that are worn out. And so you can see those as well. And uh, make note of that. Be praying about those things. And as the Lord uh, will lead you and encourage you, give and uh, help us out with these projects. But we're excited about uh, what the Lord is doing here at Tri-State Baptist Temple. Amen. Well, we'll ask our ushers to go ahead and come forward now. We'll take up our tithes, our offering, Faith Promise Missions offering again this morning. <clears throat> Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Amen. 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 Well, we're excited for Pastor to preach uh, this morning, but before he does, Roger and Judy are going to have a special song for us. You guys come right ahead. Someday this stammering tongue will falter no more, and a grander, sweeter song I shall sing. For I'll join the ransom choir on heaven's bright shore forever to praise the King. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him, and my voice will never tire or grow old, and my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while ages shall roll. When a million years have passed in that wonderful place, my song of praise will just have begun. 
For my joy will never end while I look on his face and my song will never be done. And while the ages roam, I'll keep on praising him and my voice will never tire or grow old and my song shall ever be Praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while ages shall roll. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him, and my voice will never tire or grow old. And my song shall ever be, Praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while ages shall roll and i sing it while ages shall roll amen well we appreciate the good special music our orchestra choir everybody doing such a good job today and we're thankful for it and we are thankful for you being here as well. It's a joy to see you and just a blessing to be together here. Uh, we're uh, three Sundays into the month of August, and uh, we've got just a, a little bit of August left, and then we're into the month of September, and uh, then we only have four months left. And uh, if you get any of our devotional booklets that we make available to you, our Baptist breads or uh, our... Uh, uh, our uh, children's devotions or teen devotions the glow uh, they're almost expired they will run out with the end of the month and then we'll be getting a new one that new one is going to say September October in it and then that means there'll only be one left after that it's going to say November December and then that's it and uh, so our, our, our year is quickly moving along but we are glad you're here uh, almost all the schools are back in session now and uh, I know uh, a few of the preschools, we were talking with some of our folks this morning who, uh, who are in the preschool business, and they get started for good this week, and so uh, almost everyone settled back in. I've been getting pretty much the same reaction from all the students I've been asking about how school is going. How do you like school? It's been pretty much the same thing. Just school, or I'm bored, or... Uh, I don't like it or something like that. So that's pretty much what I've been getting from everybody. Uh, but uh, the parents are excited and happy and everybody's back in their places and we're glad you're here today as well. Evan mentioned many of the things that are going on uh, here and uh, tonight is a big night for us. We do hope that all of our church family will come out and, and uh, just be here and show their support of our daycare and preschool ministries. Uh, we've had a daycare and preschool since... Uh, since the 80s, and uh, it's been uh, always a, a ministry of our church. Uh, it has just uh, the goal of, parent, uh, of partnering with parents uh, to help their children get a twofold foundation for life. They're, they're getting a biblical foundation. Everything we do is, is uh, based on biblical truths and principles uh, from, uh, from just helping uh, children with behavior and manners and and courtesy uh, and these things we, we take a biblical approach to that uh, and then the fundamental truths of God's Word and then also a good education uh, with our preschool and I believe we are able to offer a good education with our preschool uh, preparing children to begin kindergarten school so uh, tonight's a big night for us our daycare staff has been working and preschool staff all week many of them were here really late last night uh, getting the daycare and preschool facilities ready. They've got a lot of things going on in the ministry center. Uh, there's going to be refreshments. Uh, the children have been working on a lot of art projects, and there's all kinds of art projects and displays that you'll be able to see. Uh, for all the daycare and preschool families that are in our church right now, I believe they're giving away a week's free tuition to somebody. And uh, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good prize right there. Uh, so tonight and so we want our families here as well we want our church families to meet our daycare and preschool families 
because you may know some of them, and uh, they may they may be excited to see you, and uh, and are excited that this is your home church, and and uh, that they're uh, that they're here, and so we hope you'll be here tonight. It's something for everybody, and uh, we want you to be a part of that. That'll be this evening at six o'clock in the ministry center. Evan mentioned we're having the joy trip that's coming Tuesday. This Tuesday, uh, we'll meet here at church at ten thirty. We're going to go down to Ironton to the new uh, smokehouse at the Armory, that new restaurant and the old Ironton Armory building, and then to the Amish Bakery that's right next door to it. That's our trip for Tuesday morning. We'll leave here at 1030 and go down and, and hit that bakery and then go and have lunch there together. Uh, I have been told the food is great, but the service is extremely slow, so I'm not going to have high expectations on that. So I'm just going to go in there and be relaxed and just however long it takes, that's how long it'll take, right? Uh, so, uh, but the food is uh, reportedly very good. If you are old enough to get a discount on coffee at McDonald's, you're in the joy group. You have to be that old to get in. And I told our church family, a lot of you last uh, fall, I think it was, we had taken a trip up uh, uh, to uh, the northern part of Ohio Walked in a McDonald's out in the middle of this little farm town. There wasn't anything else there but a McDonald's. And I went up that morning and ordered Angie and I some things. And she said, sir, here's your order. And I gave you your senior discount. <laughs> I never asked for one, but I guess I look like I should have one. So, so I'm in now, officially, in the Joy Club. So, uh, so uh, we're going to go together. And if you haven't gone on any of those trips with us, come and go with us. We have a great time. And uh, we, we have a fun time. We ride together on the bus or the van and go back and forth and, and just get to know one another. It's a good trip. So that's, that's Tuesday at 1030. Invite someone to come and be your guest. Evan mentioned King's Turf, our flag football program. Uh, we're, uh, we've got a lot of new families. We have, I think, the, the, the most participants in this program as we've ever had, and it's not very old. Uh, and we're, uh, we're growing, and we've got lots of new families. And uh, we're excited about getting to know them throughout the year and ministering to them. And if you're sitting in this building today, uh, you are qualified to help us with King's Turf. So you come out 10 to 12 on Saturday mornings. And, uh, and very shortly, not this Saturday and maybe not this coming Saturday, but very shortly, it's going to be pleasant to be out on a Saturday morning uh, because the fall weather is going to start falling in. And it'll be fun to be out and uh, just enjoy that. We'll not keep you long, just a couple hours. If you can come and help us, we need your help. Men, ladies alike, either, either or, you come and give us a hand and uh, we can use you. Then Evan mentioned the South Point College of the Bible. And uh, we're going uh, into, I believe, our fifth year of that. Uh, we have had somewhere uh, close to 10 or 12 uh, graduates through that program, 12 classes that we're teaching. Uh, we teach three a semester. Uh, there's 12 all together. They are all college level classes. They're classes I had uh, when I was uh, taking uh, college Bible classes. Uh, it's for everyone. You don't have to be a preacher, pastor, missionary, or an evangelist. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher. Uh, you don't have to have an active role in a church in a teaching type of ministry to want to, to, to take these classes or for them to be a help to you. Uh, moms and dads ought to take them, uh, uh, just wives, husbands, uh, everybody. Uh, and, and then especially if you do work in any area of ministry in the church, you ought to want to take them because there are 12 uh, classes that will give you a tremendous foundation uh, for, uh, for the Bible. This coming uh, semester, we're teaching the book of Genesis. We're teaching Bible Doctrines 1, and we're teaching uh, personal evangelism. And those are the three classes. Uh, we meet from 6.30 to 8.30 on Thursday nights, just one night a week you have to come out. The classes are free. Uh, you have to purchase your books. You can buy them used very cheaply. We'll give you a book list. And uh, so we encourage you to come. Through, uh, through the years, we've had husbands and wives come, grandmas come. Uh, we've had uh, some college students involved, just anyone and everyone. Uh, if you have children we try to provide a nursery for your children so they'll be right across the hall and uh, be there and uh, you, can, you, can be, uh, you can be all here uh, together for just a couple hours on a Thursday night. And so uh, if you're interested, sign that list and then uh, 
uh, we'll get to some information to you. Uh, if you if you maybe didn't do it when it went through the first time today, you can catch it after church tonight uh, or today, and you can get signed up, and uh, we'll get you the information that you need, uh, and you'll be all right. And uh, I don't I don't think I've ever had to expel anyone from school, uh, and so no one's ever had to be called into the uh, president's office or anything like that. So you'll you'll do well. Well, I hope you'll take your Bible this morning and turn to Galatians chapter six. The book of Galatians, the letter Paul was given by the Holy Spirit to the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 6, and I'm going to begin to read in the 14th verse, and I want you to look at some of this scripture together with me today. Uh, throughout this year, we've had one overlying thought or theme, and that is that, uh, that, that we, we want to be families of faith, families of faith this year. Uh, families of faith believe the Bible, and when we believe the Bible, the Bible then becomes the, the, major, the major influence of our life. What we do or choose not to do, what we are, and, and what we give our life and the resources of life to, all of those things now have as the greatest factor the Word of God. Families of faith believe the Bible, and uh, we've been looking at at that throughout the summer. And today we're going to look at this thought. Families of faith believe in glorying only in the cross. Glorying only in the cross. Galatians chapter 6. And uh, you'll find verse 14. You can follow along with me. I want to read down through verse number 18. The Bible says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus." Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. We'll stop right there. We want to look at this thought. Families of faith believe in glorying only in the cross. Only in the cross. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a good day. And uh, Lord, we thank you for our local church and for all these folks who are here today. And Lord, we pray you'll meet needs in their life. I pray, Father, that you'll help our families to just grow and God, just have, their, uh, have a great foundation for themselves, for their children, Lord, for their relationships, for their marriages on the Word of God. We pray, Father, that, God, we will all have an understanding of Bible truths and principles, God, that change our lives and make us the people that, God, uh, you would have us to be. Uh, Lord, we thank you today, God, for, uh, for the opportunity to open your Word and God, to look into the Bible. We believe, God, every word of our Bibles originated in your heart and mind, that, God, you've given it to us, that we might know you, and that we might know, God, those things most important to our souls for all eternity. And so, Lord, we look to you today to speak to our hearts, and, Lord, meet every person here at the place of need that we're in. Faith, God, is how we're to live our lives. It's how we're saved. It comes, God, through the Word of God, through believing your Word and taking action on your Word. And so, Lord, today, strengthen our faith. And, uh, Lord, we pray today that maybe somebody who's come to church this morning, God, maybe, maybe this isn't their first day in church. Maybe, God, they've been going to church or have been in the past. Maybe they're in now and were out and used to go in the past. Uh, Lord, but help them, God, to see today that it isn't just going to church. It isn't, God, just trying to do right do good, God, that makes the difference. It is faith in the finished work of Christ. And that, Lord, it's a personal thing that each and every one of us, God, we must have a new life. We must be made a new creature. And, Lord, we're thankful for the power of the gospel, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, that, God, we can be born again. We can have a new life. We can have forgiveness of sin. Uh, God, we can be saved from that sin that separates us from you. So, uh, so minister to every heart in life. May we be faithfully obedient to you. 
And uh, we ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. You'll notice in the 14th verse of the, of the passage of Scripture that I read to you today, you'll find that phrase, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to... I want you to know today that that's the message of the Bible, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have, have a Bible. We believe it's God's completed word to men. We believe it's complete in its 66 books. Uh, there are 39 Old Testament books, Genesis to the book of Malachi. There are 27 New Testament books from the book of Matthew to the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we believe every one of them is the inspired Word of God, that it is inerrant, that it is infallible, that in fact it would be incapable of us, of us finding an error in it because of where it came from. It came from God Himself, who is a perfect and holy God, who has given us His Word, and He has preserved His Word. And throughout all of these 66 books, 1,189 chapters in the Bible, there's one great message and that is the message of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. This, this is the message. This is the message of the Word of God. The work that Jesus Christ alone accomplished for all men on the cross. And if we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, both as an individual and as a local church, this is our message to all men. And it is our message in all that we are and in all that we do, in our lives as individuals and in our homes, in our relationships, uh, the cross, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, helping others to know the message of the cross, that is our purpose, the message of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we, when we read the New Testament, and when we look at this period of human history, Rome ruled the world. Rome. Israel and Palestine, the Jews, like all peoples of the world, were under the authority of Rome. Under Roman tyranny, under Roman rule, throughout their period of, of power, in human history, tens of thousands of people died on the cross. The Romans saw a people group, the Armenians, whom they defeated in battle. They saw them put to death their enemies by nailing them to trees. The Romans saw this. They saw their enemy do this. Well, the Romans, being the ingenious people they were, took that practice and they perfected it to the highest level possible. And they began the practice of crucifying men on crosses. And tens of thousands of them under Roman rule around the world were crucified. During the Roman Empire, 100 million people in the world were the slaves of the Romans. 100 million. That was 60% of the world's population at that time. Rome conquered and then they enslaved the peoples of the countries they, they conquered. They forced them into slavery, building and constructing and, and being the driving force of the expansion of their empire around the world. When Titus, the Roman emperor, came into power, he became angry with the insurrection and disobedience of some of the Jews in Israel and Palestine. And he motivated all the forces of Rome to march against Jerusalem and against Israel. And he brought the armies there. And in AD 70, he completely destroyed the city of Jerusalem. He destroyed the temple. He tore it down to where there was not one stone left standing atop another stone. And he came in with such power and he came in to make such a point that some days, for some period of time, 500 Jews were crucified at Jerusalem every single day. Titus was making a statement to the world 
that he would not allow this kind of rebellion and insurrection to take place. When we speak, though, of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not talking about any other man dying on a cross. Though tens of thousands died on crosses, when we speak about the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not speaking about just another man dying on a cross. See, this is where the Bible tells us what really happened there that day. That day that this man named Jesus, the man who was from Nazareth, this man that was was crucified on that cross that day, the Bible tells us the truth about this man, that he was not a man like other men were. This man, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he, the Bible said, tasted death for every man. The Bible says of this man that he died on the cross. He died there for all men. He died there for the sins of all men. He died there for all sin. He died once for the sin of all men for all time. And no man had ever died like this man died. We know that Jesus Christ was buried. This man was buried. He He was buried in a tomb, and on the third day, the Bible said, He rose again. He took back up His life. He had the power to lay down His life uh, to pay for the sins of men, and He took it back up again when the price was paid in full. And He stepped out of that tomb, the Bible says. He lived in this world for 40 more days. And then the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, He ascended back into heaven. And the Bible said he left with the promise that he is coming again. Just as he came the first time, he's coming again. And we know that this is, this, this is, this is what the Bible has said. And we know that this is the message that most men need to know and understand. That the message of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what men, meet, men need to know. In Revelation chapter 9, the Bible says, or chapter 5, The Bible says, beginning in verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts of the elders and the and the and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands. Verse twelve, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing forevermore. This is the message of the Bible. Now and forever, that Jesus Christ is worth all glory and honor because of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 14 of our text in Galatians 6, we see, we see the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. God dying in man's place. God come to do for men what men could not do. And that was was to pay our sin debt and satisfy God so that we might be set free from that sin debt. God dying for men. But we also see, we also see the crucifixion of the world here. The Bible says, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me. Here we find the potential for the crucifixion of the world. We have within us a natural lust for and desire for what the world offers to us. We have it within us to lust for it, to want it. Uh, we, we, We have a natural taste for the things of the world. And the Bible says that at the cross, there is the potential for the crucifixion of the world to us. 
But I want you to notice also, it also says that the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. I want you to see that also, when we look at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see the power, the power for the flesh. When we speak about the flesh, when the Bible talks about the flesh, it's not talking about your skin that you can feel. It's talking about our sin nature. What we are without Christ, our sin nature, uh, our self, at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is the power for it to die, to be put to death, so that we might truly live for the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus Christ. It's how, it's how we deal with the world. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the cross, there is power to overcome the world, not to be conformed to it, to become like it. At the cross of Jesus Christ, there's the, there's the power. In fact, it's the only way to have victory over ourselves. And we are our greatest enemies. And we can have victory over ourselves it is the only way we can truly live for Christ alone and know Him not just as Savior, but know Him as our Lord. Know Him as our King. The cross of Jesus Christ satisfied God in every respect concerning our sin debt. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the receipt of our sin debt paid in full unto God. And the cross provides victory over all of our enemies and there's no one, there is nothing that can lay claim against those who are born again. The cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope you'll just drop these three simple things down. I hope we'll believe today, together today that we have nothing to glory in but the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Write down number one, the glory of the cross. The glory of the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ, the central point in all of human history. We can point to a lot of significant things that have happened in human history. But the greatest of them all is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that it reveals, the cross reveals the depth of man's sin and the love of God. The depth of the sin of man and the height of the love of God. We see it all at the cross. We see Jesus Christ, the Son of God, perfect and sinless, righteous and holy, who did that which always pleased God, who Himself was God, coming into the world, suffering at the hands of men. We find men uh, and the cruelty that they, that they inflicted upon Him in a physical sense. And we see Him suffering on the cross. But it wasn't just what happened to Him at the hands of men. But then once He was on the cross, we saw that God forsook Him. That God poured out His wrath upon His Son. That His Son suffered uh, drinking from the cup of the wrath of God, uh, poured out upon His Son, not for anything the Son was guilty of, but because of what we were guilty of, He suffered on that cross. We see the depth of our sin. We see what our sin costs and how it affected God the Father that He had to give His Son. But we also see the height of the love of God because what we needed the most, God willingly gave. He gave us His Son. We looked at it in Sunday school today, John 3.16. Many people say it's the key verse in all the Bible. And the Bible said, For God so loved the world. And we say, we're going to mark that little word so. It's just two letters. But what it does is it causes us to think about how much God loved us and what He did to demonstrate it. Because when we were sinners and lost and separated from God forever and deserving of an eternity without God to suffer and pay our own sin debts because we're rebellious by our nature. We are, uh, we are uh, at odds with God. We, we live for self and for the flesh and we're prideful and, and, and we're unwilling often to acknowledge our sinfulness and we deserve uh, the wages of sin as death. We deserve that when we were in that state, God so loved us. He gave His Son to come and suffer for us. The cross of Jesus Christ. 
Verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We might ask ourselves today, if we would be honest, what do we glory in? What do we glory in? You know, the cross ought to take every bit of glory out of us. It ought to take every bit out. It ought to wring it all out. So there's not any thing, no fiber in our being that glories in anything but the cross of the Lord Jesus. We all deserve hell. We deserve that. You say, Pastor, I don't know about you, but I don't know if that, that, that goes for me. And I don't know all of you and all of your past and all of your history. You don't know all of mine. But, but we are all sinners. And our sin required the suffering and the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All of us. All of us. And we deserve, we deserve hell. We've earned our debt, death and separation from God. We have nothing to glory in within ourselves. Paul said it this way in Romans 17, For I know that in me, Paul said, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. No good thing. There are so many, so many, so many who are trying to do their best. And there's nothing wrong with trying to do our best. We ought to do our best. So many people that are trying to become good people, turn over a new leaf, reinvent themselves. But, but there isn't any good thing in us. You go, you go to Philippians chapter 3 sometime and just read chapter 3 and, and Paul, Paul's led of the Spirit of God there to share some things. He, he, says, he says in Philippians 3 verse 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord and to write the same thing to you to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, Paul said. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul's saying here, listen, whenever you're tempted to think you're something that you're not, whenever you're tempted to rely upon what you are and who you are, whenever you're tempted to glory in anything but the cross of Jesus Christ, Paul said, remember that if any man could do that or should do that, it would be me. He says, he says here, because I was circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law. Paul said, I was blameless. He said, if you want to... If you want to stand on your two feet, I'll stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. And I'm as good as any one of you are. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was of the tribe of Benjamin from which, uh, from, from which the, uh, many of the, uh, uh, of the elite of Israel through the years came. He was a Pharisee, meaning he was recognized as an educated religious leader among the people. He was known as a man able to keep all the laws of God. He was as good as they got in human flesh. But I want you to notice what he said. He said, verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. But, but Doubtless, he said, And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Listen, no one ever did it better than Paul. Paul did everything he did as well as a man could do it. Paul, though, went on to say, 
In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Paul said, this is the thing I've learned, that no matter who I was or what I was, before I met Jesus Christ, I was nothing. And I had no reason to put confidence in myself. Our flesh will fail us. It will fail us. It will bring us up short, no matter what it is that we do. If we leave God out of anything in our lives, our flesh will fail. If it's in our marriages, you husbands and wives, if you leave God out of them, somewhere down the line, your flesh is going to cause that thing to fail. If it's in parenting our children, if we try to do it without the Lord in the middle of it all, We're going to fail at it. Whatever we do, especially when it comes to our relationship with God, our flesh will fail us every time. Paul said, I have nothing but the cross of Jesus Christ. The righteousness that I have by faith in Christ alone is the only thing I have confidence in. Our best is not enough. We are not. We cannot be perfect. But Jesus Christ is. He is the righteous one. Uh, We know that that he has given himself on the cross for us. He lives to those so that uh, that he might give himself and all he is to you. We speak of people as good people and bad people, and and I know what we mean by that. We, We see the actions and behavior of people. We can't see their hearts and minds, but we see the actions they do. We say that's a good person, that's a bad person. We teach our children, you don't hang out with the bad people. You know, you you don't want that. We know what we say by that. We know what we're saying by that. But we we must not see it that way. See? What we must do is we must we must not see ourselves as that way. We can't afford to say, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. We can't afford to say that. We can't afford to con to, to convince ourselves of that. Because uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, it's not good or bad compared to others. It is the fact that we all are sinners, needy sinners. That's, that's who we all are. It's not about being good or bad. It's about the fact that we're all needy. We're all sinners. We have nothing to glory in. We fight this in our nature, see? We fight this. We want the glory. At least to some degree, we want to be right. We want to be seen as being right. We want to be seen as being good. But, but today, the glory all belongs to Jesus Christ. He's the only one worthy. He's the only one worthy. Paul said, Paul said in Philippians 3, All I am and all I have done apart from Jesus Christ is dung. Well, that's a word we don't use every day. But it's a simple word to understand, isn't it? It's, it's animal excrement, dung. And Paul said, that's all I am without Jesus Christ. At my best, and the best I can do before God, that's what I am. That's what I am. And it's, it, it's when, we, when we begin to glory only in the cross, that's when we begin to see the power of the cross. And the power of Jesus Christ begin to work in our hearts and homes is when we begin to glory in only the cross. Only the cross. Write down this second thing very quickly. I'll be done. The gain of the cross. The gain of the cross. Verse 15, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. A new creature. We talked about in a building with the Bible hour. Some buildings, they have condemned on them. They're all roped off, condemned. Corey and Rusty, they work for a company who, man, they get to go down in there, guys, and do what we always dreamed about doing, just taking a piece of equipment and just plowing through and destroying and tearing it down and scraping it up and hauling it away. That's what I used to do with my Tonka truck. Didn't you do that? I I never get to do it in real life, but they get to do it in real life. They're still living the dream. 
You didn't know it, did you, Rusty? You guys didn't realize that out when it's 105 degrees outside. You're working. When that building is condemned, that means there isn't any renovating it. It's, it's too far gone. You can't do anything with that. It's just got to be torn down and you've got to start all over. When it comes to you and I and our relationship with God, we're too far gone. We can't just throw a coat of paint on ourselves and try to reinvent ourselves. We are condemned spiritually because of our sin. We need to be born again. A new creature, Paul said, is the only thing that's going to make a difference. It's not circumcision, I'm in this crowd, or I'm in that crowd, or I've done this, or I've done that. It doesn't matter, Paul said. The only thing that matters is a new creature in Christ Jesus. And that's because of the power of the cross. The power of the cross. And, and it's the cross that we're to glory in. And I want you to know today that there's forgiveness of our sin debt. There's eternal life. Uh, acceptance with God. None of those things are by works. I can't buy that. I can't work for that. Uh, I can't get that. Uh, or I would boast in it. I would glory in it. It's only by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all by His grace. And, and, and the Word of God... The Word of God tells us that we have nothing to glory in. And no matter what we do with the flesh or in the flesh, it will always be lost. And the flesh cannot be improved upon. It needs new life. It needs a new birth. And we must put our flesh to death. We must strip it all away until there's nothing left to glory in but the cross. And everything I need, what I need to gain, I gain it by the cross of Jesus Christ. Then write down number three, the grace of the cross. Everything we gain is by the cross of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Everything we gain. Verse 16 in our text, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Paul ends this chapter, led the Holy Spirit, reminding us of the grace of God, that it is all by the grace of God. All we have to gain is through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and all we stand to gain was not cheap. It was not cheap. I'm thankful today I can be saved by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ. Not of works. Not of works. It is salvation freely given to all who will believe. To repent and believe. Salvation freely given. But all I have to gain was not cheap. It took a great price to pay for what I needed the most. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. God gave His only begotten Son. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, Zealous of good works. Grace. The grace of God has brought salvation. The grace of God. All we have to gain is brought to us by grace. What should that teach us? It teacheth us. It says teaching us. What does? The grace of God. The fact that God has given us by His grace this great gift of His Son. What should that teach us? But it should teach us that it is all by grace. It is all by grace. And that because it is all by grace, this should teach us how we ought to live our lives. How we ought to live them. Who, who, should, who should we do what we, what, what we do for? And, 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 and how ought we to do it? And what are we to live for and what are we to give for and to? Grace teaches us those things. The grace of God teaches us those things. 
How can we live free from the world? And why should we? And how can we and why should we put self to death and live only for Jesus Christ? Well, the grace of God teaches us that. The grace of God teaches us that. Uh, You know, about living to get and gain or to give. Give. Because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of God. Because all we need we have in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God gave us that as a gift. That teaches us what we ought to do with our lives and all that we are and have. That we are to live them in glory only in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory only in His cross. Paul said said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I live it, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what grace teaches us. That's what the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us. I'm not living and working to be saved, but because I am and can be because of the cross of Jesus Christ, then I want to give my life and all I am and have to glorying only in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and helping other men and women, boys and girls, come to know what he did for them as well because it's the greatest message. It's the message all men need to know and to hear. People of faith, families of faith, we believe in glorying only in the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. All around the building, our folks are coming to the instruments. In a moment, we'll stand and we'll sing a verse of a song, an invitation song. An invitation is just the opportunity in the service for you to say yes to God. I can't tell you how many times I've sat where you sat. In all the years that I've known the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, before I was a preacher and a pastor and afterwards, I can't tell you how many times I've sat where you sat. And God spoke to my heart, and I slipped out of my seat and came and met the Lord. And I just allowed the Lord to have that part of my life, to obey Him as He led me. Whatever it was that He was speaking to me about, I can't tell you how many times I've done that, but I can tell you this, I never regretted any one of those times. Never regretted it. I don't know what the Lord might be speaking to your heart about today. It could be that you just want to come and say, Lord, God forbid, like Paul did, that I should glory, saving the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have nothing to glory in in ourselves. Maybe we just need to come and say, Lord, I know through the cross there's power to have victory over the world so that we don't live like the world lives. The world's living for things that a million years won't won't matter from now. And the only things the world can give you are things that won't matter a million years from now. But how many times are we often satisfied with just that? And God wants to do so much more in our lives. Maybe some folks need to come today and say, Lord, not the world, not the world, but you. Lord, what you want for me, what you want for me, that's what I want. Help me to not be satisfied with just the world, but with you, with you. Maybe you need to come today. Maybe husbands and wives. Maybe some folks need to come, moms and dads, and and say, Lord, help me to have victory over the flesh so that I can glory only in the cross, so that I'm not trusting in the flesh because it will fail. Lord, help me to look to you today. Maybe you're here today and you came to church and you've never come to Jesus Christ. If you died today, you don't know you're saved. Maybe you you grew up in a religious family. Maybe you went to church as a child. Maybe you're trying to come now or you came in the past or went somewhere in the past and and, and you're looking to that uh, to be a new start or or, or what you need to be accepted by God and to have a home in heaven someday. The Bible said it's, it's not enough. We must be born again. We must put our faith in Christ alone and the work of the cross. Maybe you've never done that before. Maybe you're unsure if you've done that before. Maybe you don't know today and have assurance of your salvation. Today's the day. Today's the day. God, by His grace, has us here today at this moment for this purpose. You can settle it today. 
Maybe you ought to slip out of your seat and come and we'll meet you right here and you have no reason in the world to be embarrassed. Or if you'd like to meet us after the service, we'd love to do that. We'll meet you right after the service. Anybody in the service today say, Pastor, just slip up your hand. Pastor, I'd like to speak to you after the service is over. Just right after the service, I'd like to just meet with you. I want to settle this thing about being saved. I want to settle it. I want to know that I've been born again by the power of the gospel, the cross work of Jesus Christ. I want to know this. Anybody in the building? Lord, we just commit this invitation to you. and May we all, God, be obedient. Just be obedient. And Lord, just believe you. Believe your word. And move forward in faith. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together. We're playing hymn 282. They're going to sing a verse of that together. And uh, you just uh, be obedient to the Lord today. Hymn 282 in our hymn book. that second verse, verse 2. One more. Let's sing that third verse, our final verse. glad you're here today. It's been a good day, a good morning. We're thankful for you and your family and, and your place right here in our local church. Uh, tonight's a big night. Don't forget, 6 o'clock. And uh, many of our church family, maybe you've not been through the daycare preschool facility in a while. Maybe you haven't even seen all that new flooring and all the new trim and moldings and things. And our buildings never look better. And so we want you to come by for sure tonight. And we'll have a time when we open up that building. You can go through and check it out. Uh, you'll be able to see all the brand new uh, themes and uh, things uh, for uh, both the uh, toddler side as well as our preschool side. And uh, you'll be able to take a look at where the preschool meets and see their curriculum and, and get an idea of what, uh, what we're doing as far as preparing them educationally. And then you know as a local church what we're trying to do uh, to help them to have a good biblical foundation. Six o'clock tonight, you be sure to come and uh, we'll, we'll enjoy that together. Well, let's pray together, and uh, we're going to look to the Lord today and uh, just be dismissed and uh, have, have a word of prayer. Brother Rusty, you care just to dismiss us, please.